by 1% every year the public deficit, and we reduced it by 5%. Right, radical. And, and the range of reforms that are applied in the, in, in the Greek economy, in the Greek society in general, are, are something unbelievable. Unprecedented. If we look at the front page of Wednesday's Financial Times, um, you'll see that uh, there the headline is Greece faces suicide vote. Now, the suicide in quotation marks they're talking about is a quote from the governor of the central bank saying it's suicide if the Greeks vote against the bill. However, however, uh, you, do get, uh, you do get the feeling here uh, that uh, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, that it's a kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation right now. Yanis Varoufakis? Right. We'll try to get, uh, we'll try to, sp to speak to Yanis in a moment of technical difficulties there. Ali Fatemi, I'll put it to you as well. Uh, it, it really is a, a, a situation where the Greeks are really between a rock and a hard place. Well, this, this is the best way out. Considering the alternatives, there is no other choice. They, this is, uh, it, I just, Talking about this with BBC, I just said this is medicine that patient is given, and there's no way. Greece has three problems. This is only one of them. It's liquidity, insolvency, and lack of com competitivity. This is only going to solve the liquidity problem. They have no answer for the insolvency. They owe more money than they have assets. And the most important one, the long-term one, is going to be they're not competitive. So I think right now... Europe has no choice but to go all the way and keep the Greeks in Euro and keep the Euro going. Because if I were a Greek politician today, I would go for getting out. I would go for getting back to Drachma, doing what Argentina did 10 years ago, having two hard years but then become competitive. But if that happens, we will have something far greater than the Lehman Brothers' failure. The Germans know that, the bankers know that, because that would mean total default. But in the long run, this is going to be a very, very hard and difficult process, but this is the best option as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the problem is you talked about what has broken down. I think what's broken down is communication. People were never aware of the fact that the government is doing these things. For years, they gave the wrong data. They cheated on the numbers. They gave the wrong data to the uh, Eurostat and all those things. And all of a sudden, you're told you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your pension. Of course people react in this manner. So I think, essentially, the prime minister must be congratulated on what he's doing. The former finance minister who just replaced is a former colleague of mine that I hired him to teach at the American University here in Paris. He's a fantastic economist. They're doing a marvelous job. I think they deserve the support of Europe because the future of the Western world's economy depends on the outcome of what happens here. But let me just... You, you, you make, I just want to bring, in the, bring up the two points that you, that you make there, because they're, they're important ones. First of all, uh, whether or not Greece would be better off within or outside of the Eurozone. And secondly, the credibility of Greece when it speaks. Let's listen to, uh, in our very first television interview, um, on Tuesday evening, after being nominated as boss of the IMF, the outgoing French finance minister... She recognized that Greece will top her agenda when she gets to Washington. Christine Lagarde saying, for the time being, in any case, that dropping out of the Eurozone for her is not an option. That is the worst scenario, which must be imperatively and by all means avoided. It must be done in a concerted and collective manner. All the creditors will have to come to Greece's help, but Greece has to take charge and be responsible, whilst, of course, being mindful of its public finances. Greece has to take charge and be responsible. Uh, what are you, what's your reaction, uh, Etimos Aravantinos, about, uh, let's talk about it bluntly here, an image problem your country has in terms of uh, uh, what Ali Fatemi was uh, underlining earlier? So, undoubtedly, there's been a problem of credibility for a few years. So. But is it the case at the moment? Uh, the government has uh, voted a mid-term plan which is absolutely credible. 
It is a very well elaborated plan, and tomorrow they are vote uh, uh, most hopefully uh, the directive, the law. The plan is quite credible. Uh, what the, the government has done so far concerning reforms are credible, and they have they bear fruits which are quite visible and quite concrete. Let's pick up from the top here. The, the, the Obviously, top of the agenda, the biggest accusation levied against the Greeks is they don't pay their taxes. We, we have a, a, a study that was published in L'Express, a weekly news magazine here, says that 5,000 Greeks uh, declare revenues of more than 100,000 euros a year. This in a country of 11 million. We, we, yeah, what happens is that, of course, there is corruption, and, of course, there are people who don't pay their taxes. Uh, one of the reasons is that, um, uh, of course, the taxation system had to change, which has been done and will be done further, furthermore. Uh, but at the same time, th to say that uh, Greek people and in general avoid paying taxes, this is a kind of stereotype which is not true. That's why the taxation, the taxation system needed reform. It needed reform, and of course. Uh, of course, at the same time, the attitude of the public should be kind of different, and especially of certain groups which avoided permanently paying their taxes. But the majority of the people paid according to the rules. How do you explain also the fact, for instance, uh, you're only now um, const uh, constituting a land registry? Up to now, if you wanted to buy or sell a house, there were no public records that gave a specific land registry. Why was that never on, uh, done before? That has to do, uh, I reckon, with deficiency of the uh, public se sector. The public sector had to be modernized, and uh, uh, it needed a, a great reform, which is, which is an ongoing reform at the moment. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is a huge task, and this reform cannot be done just within... I mean, several months or even a couple of years. It's, it's a reform process that is it's really long and uh, quite difficult. No. Because you have to speak with uh, all the uh, groups of the society, you have to discuss it with uh, but time's uh, certain not on your, interests that time's are, not on your side. are affected. People are critical, for instance, we're going to talk about it more in part two, but the pace of privatization has gone too slowly for creditors. And most of this should have been done before Greece joined the euro. I think that they really rushed it into joining the euro, and Greece was not ready. There were several other countries. There have been privatizations before, but of course the new plan of privatizations, which, let's say, for, for a four-year year period of time, they predict a 50 billion privatization plan, that's, that's a huge privatization process. It's huge. It's uncomparable with what happened in the past. We're going to get to that more in part two. I want to just uh, show you a few of the comments from the France 24 debate Facebook page. Uh, viewers uh, sympathetic to those protesting uh, during this 48-hour strike. Honey Benjamin saying the people must never accept these austerity measures on behalf of what he calls the banksters who created <laughs> this mess. Never with four exclamation points or five, rather. Mike is Thomas Carlucci from Brampton, Ontario. This tragedy in Greece has been caused by corrupt politicians, lying government agencies, and foreign banks. The banks, again, there uh, are the ones that are blamed. He says private sector workers who blame the public sector workers for having benefits is nothing but ignorance and jealousy. There is a bit of a situation where people in Greece pitted against one another. And then we have uh, Panagiotis from Athens. He writes, I'm sorry to say that where things have come to this point, there's nothing more to do but gain time, because this is exactly what those EU and IMF packages are, uh, uh, time uh, uh, in, or plots to gain time. For the real economy, the only solution is the new generation that's not used to living from public subsidies, but this change is going to be a long and painful one. In real life, there is no easy solution. Uh, w once again, Ali Fatemi, uh, we're talking about, we're, we're asking... Uh, for a lifestyle change overnight here. Yeah, I think Greece is going to be the catalyzer for changing the European Monetary Union. I think we are going to see, as a result of the tragedy that's going on right now, that we are going to have in the future not only a monetary union, but a fiscal union. We are going to have the same tax system. We are going to have the same 
kind of fiscal restrictions on the budgets controlled from Brussels. There's no other way. You can't just ask taxpayers of Germany for money when you need it, and then you say, it's my business whether I pay taxes or not. It's going to end for Spain, for Portugal, for Italy, for France, all these things. Either the European Union, European Monetary Union will survive, then it needs to have the same fiscal policy, or sooner or later it will break up. All right. We're, we're, it's almost time for the break, but before we go, uh, Yanis Varoufakis uh, with us by telephone. Uh, that 48-hour um, uh, strike uh, hitting the, our Skype connection, it seems, Yanis. Um, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, your thoughts very briefly on this issue of uh, the fact that this is actually uh, interim and that uh, the real hard medicine is yet to come. Well, the medicine has been tried before. We are having a, a deja vu feeling experience now because the medicine is not different at all to the medicine that was applied in May 2010. If you remember, with the bailout mark one and austerity mark one, bailout mark two and austerity mark two is just um, more of the same. And uh, the first medicine, it wasn't just that it was uh, bitter and uh, nevertheless uh, resulted in some improvement in the patient. Uh, the opposite happened. It, it was poisoning the patient. It was making the debt to GDP ratio worse, the recession deeper, and it spread contagion to Ireland and Portugal. So whether or not, whether or not, uh, the, whether or not the medicine, uh, this uh, new dose of medicine, is good or bad for the patient. Unfortunately, we're going to have to. I'm going to put the question for you after the break because we have to take a short break. Stay 